don't mean swimming. I mean fondue. First, you get a bit cheesy. Just look at all of it. And then, for dessert, we go for the chocolate. Big time. I couldn't resist looking at taste. But neither could Dad. And neither will you. Today on Fun Food Frenzy, we're having a fondue party. And you're invited. skiing, so today we're having an après ski party. Après in French means after, so it's the partying you do after you ski. Hi, Jess. Hi. Here's a bread for our seriously Swiss cheese fondue. Fondue? Mm. That's what people had after skiing in the olden days. Mm. I want to do something new. Uh, you know what would be way cooler? What? Some kind of new energy drink or power bar. Gee, well... You know, I thought it'd be fun to make something traditional. I want to make something new. Well, I guess we just moved to the tick of a different clock, hmm? Right. I'm the clock, and you're the cuckoo. <laughs> well, uh, what am I gonna do with all the chocolate? Did he say chocolate? <gasps> I thought you said cheese fondue. Oh, I did. But I thought we'd make some mouth-wateringly melty chocolate fondue, too. But I guess we can save the chocolate and all those yummy fruits for another show. Wait! Let's go with your idea. You sure? Because, I mean, power bars and energy drinks can really give you the boost you need after hitting the slopes. Tradition can be cool, too. Especially when it involves chocolate. <laughs> the jungle picking strawberries for our chocolate fondue. You know, it usually sounds like a jungle in here. Today it's quiet. Too quiet. That sounds like an avalanche! Snow in the jungle? This isn't snow. It's cheese! And that's no avalanche. That's the grumbler. Hey, grumbler! What are you doing with cheese in the jungle? Hmm. I think he's giving me a hint. I got it. Cheese comes from milk, and milk comes from cows. Cows eat grass, which is a plant, and plants grow in the jungle. Huh? I need some of that cheese, big guy. Thanks a lot. Lumpy milk. Yeah, no one likes that, right? Wrong. It's what making cheese is all about. Heating milk with an ingredient that helps the curdle makes cheese. The milk separates into curds, the solid bits, and whey, the liquid part. The whey is drained and the cheese curds are pressed and left to ripen until they're ready to eat. Most cheeses are made this way. What makes all the different kinds depends on the things like how long they age, the way the cheese is pressed, and even what kind of grass the cow eats. In Canada, we make lots of different cheeses, like cheddar, mozzarella, gouda, and feta. Of course, nothing beats those cheese curds when you're making a poutine. That's pretty cheesy. Mm, cheesy. Kind of like my dad. So, Jesse, which fondue do you want to make first? Mouth-watering, melty chocolate fondue. Mm -hmm. 
I might have guessed. Well, we need to chop up the fruit into bite-sized pieces. I'll begin with the bananas. So what exactly is fondue, Dad? Oh, fondue is a French cooking word that means to melt. So with our cheese fondue, we'll be making a melted cheese sauce, and our guests will be dipping pieces of bread into it. You know, fondue is practically the Swiss national dish. Really? So if they had bread and cheese, why didn't they just make cheese sandwiches? Oh, well, long ago in Switzerland, the winter snowfalls would cut the villages off from each other, and there was no way to bring in fresh food. Making a fondue was a way to use up bread and cheese that had already gone hard. Well, why didn't they just email their order in? Uh, this was before telephone or cable lines. Well, then they should have used a laptop with a wireless modem and had their groceries helicoptered in. Jesse, when I said this was long ago, I meant before computers or air travel. <laughs> Pass the apples, Jesse. Now I'll cut up the apples. Uh, remember, when you're doing sharp knife work, you gotta have an adult in the kitchen, just to be safe. Did you say safe? I did. We have a safety alert in progress. All viewers be advised, only adults may handle sharp knives. That's right. And never try new food unless an adult says it's okay. You could be allergic. Once you've removed the seed and core, you cut the apples into nice little bite-sized pieces. Do you think I should leave the red on? Um... Yeah, they look good that way with a little edge of red. Then your guests can tell they're the apple slices. There you go. Apples go brown, too. So you can sprinkle some lemon juice on. Mm -hmm. Good. As well as the bananas. Now, while I cut the peel off the oranges, why don't you take the stems off the strawberries? You can leave the stems on if you like how they look with the green. Well, I think I'll take them off, because otherwise my guests will have to pick them off later. Mm -hmm. Oops. Should we cut the strawberries smaller? Well, that depends on how big they are. Mm, these ones are pretty big. You should cut them in half. Okay. Why don't you finish taking the stems off of the others? medium-high heat. There we go. And I'm going to chop up the semi-sweet chocolate because it'll melt faster in little pieces. This is going to be sweet, isn't it? Yeah, but we burned up a lot of calorie skiing today. Once the cream is boiled, take it off the stove and... Add the chocolate! That's right. Start putting that in a little bit at a time, and I'll stir it up. Oh, yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. This is going to taste awesome. You bet. And once we've got all the chocolate mixed in, we'll keep the chocolate sauce warm until we're ready to put it in a fondue pot. I can't wait to taste that. Yum. Yes, you can wait. It's for later. Now we're starting our seriously Swiss cheese fondue. And we're using Emmental cheese. Great. Uh, why don't you grate it? Mm. Those? Mm. Mm. Emmental has a tangy taste to it. Mm. Let me try. Mmm, that's good. I'm cutting up a loaf of French bread for the bread cubes. Fresh bread is okay, but it's better to use stale bread. Mm, like the old Swiss villagers. Yeah. And that gives me an idea for the lab. It's 
scientific fact. Everybody loves fresh bread. Mmm, the smell, the taste, the, the way it melts in your mouth. But be warned, the minute bread leaves the oven, an uncontrollable force starts to act on it, which will lead to its inevitable destruction. It starts to go stale. Oh. <laughs> that is for the party. Well, I was just, you know, making sure it's okay for my guests. These were headed for the composter. Somebody I know, about this tall, blonde, left them out overnight. Got a piece of store-bought bread and a piece of French bread from the bakery. Now let's see what happened. Hmm. The store-bought bread is still kind of bendy, but the surface is all crunchy. See, it's lost moisture to the air. That is, it's started to go stale. The French bread, whew, <laughs> that's hard as a rock. You see, the French bread has really dried out because it doesn't have much fat in it. And fats and sugars hold in moisture. Ooh. Oh, there's also something else happening here. Bread's got a lot of starch in it. And starch molecules are kind of like rubber. When they're heated, they expand and get flexible. That's what makes fresh bread really soft. But when they cool down, they shrink. And the bread... It's hard. Ow! Ow! <laughs> oh. Now, if your bread goes stale like this, you can temporarily bring the softness back by reheating it. But there's something else that can happen to bread that makes it, well, too far gone. Mold. <laughs> See, mold is a plant that grows from tiny seeds called spores. When the spores land on a food source and it's warm enough and moist enough, the mold starts to grow. Mm. Ugh, musty. These spores are everywhere in the air, but you can't see them without one of these, microscope. Let's take a closer look. There, that's the mold. Yeah, not exactly what I ordered for lunch. Now, sometimes chemicals are added to bread to keep them from going stale or getting moldy too quickly. They have fancy scientific names like monoglycerides or calcium propionate. But the chemicals can only slow down the process. The best way to make sure your bread is fresh is to eat it fresh. Ow! cheese fondue. That's right. I've heated up some apple juice over moderate heat. You can also use white grape juice. You don't want to make it too hot because if you overcook cheese, it gets all tough and stringy. Yeah. So you add in the cheese about a quarter at a time and stir well between additions. There we go. I love the way the apple juice and cheese smell together. That's right. Mmm. <sighs> yeah, go ahead and drop that in. Just be careful because it's hot. Yeah. There. Not just yet. How about a little music to stir by? Yeah, I'll play my new CD. Oh, uh, I've got some good news and bad news, Jess. 
Oh, what's the bad news? Well, I was doing the wash yesterday, and uh, your CD went through the dryer. Oh, no! What's the good news? Well, I've queued up some traditional Swiss folk music. That's good news? Well, yeah! Hit it! When the cheese is melted, add the lemon juice and the cornstarch mixture. And keep on stirring. That beat is contagious, isn't it? Don't you just love the accordion? Ah, uh, sure. Then turn the heat down low and keep stirring until it's smooth but slightly thick. Now add a pinch of salt. Mm hmm. Pinch of salt. Right, a pinch of pepper. Pinch of pepper. And a pinch of nutmeg. Mm hmm. Hmm. Smells nice and spicy. Nutmeg. There we go. Aw, the music's over. Oh, no. That was just the first song. It's a 90 minute tape. Jesse, I'm thinking this is probably a good time to teach you. How to book lift tickets by the internet? How to find ski conditions by email? Actually, I was gonna say it's a good time to teach you a more traditional way of communicating. Yodeling. Yodeling? Yeah, that's how the Swiss shepherds used to call out to each other and to their flocks. Try this. Olo. Good. Now try this. Ole. Okay, now we put them together. Ready? One, two, three. Good. And then you finish off with another ole and I-O. Ready to try? Okay. Here we go. And once more. Excellent. Why don't we yodel our way over to the cleanup area? Darn, I almost tied you that. Oh, lo, lo. Oh, oh, lo, lo. Oh, lo, lo. I, oh. Yeah, it's cleanup time. What a drag. You wash, I'll dry. Okay. Hey, you. Oh, I'm going to get you. Muffing, muffing, muffing. This is fun. This is hard work. Wow, super clean. I guess it wasn't so bad. <laughs> my fondue party is ready. All I need now are my guests. Oh, I can take care of that. Yodelole. Ready to dip into the cheese fondue? Yeah. Just be careful, there's flames under the pot, so try and be safe. Did you say sink? We have a safety alert in progress. All viewers, be advised. Keep your hands and napkins away from open flames and never leave lit candles or burners on the table unattended. This is how you do it. 
Take a piece of bread and spear it on your special fondue fork. Mm -hmm. Swirl it around in the cheese mm -hmm. and take it out. And you put it on your plate and let it cool off a little bit and take it off with your dinner fork and eat it with that, not with the fondue fork. Because we want to share the fondue, not the germ. Oh. <laughs> Everybody ready to try? Yeah! All right, I'm gonna pass some bread around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two or three pieces. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can see. Right. I seem to like fondue. Mm -hmm. You don't know what happens if you drop your stuff in the cheese pot. Yeah. There's an old rule about that. You gotta kiss all the boys at the table. Oh. <laughs> but we're skipping that one today. Mm. I don't suppose anybody here wants to try the chocolate fondue? I do! Okay, here we go. You need some fruit? No, you're good. I'm gonna put it down there. You need more to reach for it, because I gotta because, get in like, there myself. Need it. It's very good. Mm. Thanks. Really tasty at all. If I might say so myself. <laughs> Here's how to take a poke at our yummy chocolate fondue. First, cut some apples, bananas, strawberries, and oranges, then pour a little lemon juice over the apples and bananas to keep them from turning brown. Now it's time to start the chocolate sauce. Start by heating some 35% cream over medium-high heat. While the cream is heating, chop the semi-sweet chocolate into small bits to help it melt faster. Remove the cream from the heat and slowly stir in the chocolate until it's nice and smooth. Transfer to a fondue pot and ring the dinner bell. Time to say to Lulu do party. See you next time on, on fun, fun Food Frenzy. Mm. Can you guys yodel? And then the saddle club at three o'clock. Bring your saddle and heads up. Look at that spaceship. Woohoo! to the only program that makes plastic bubbles float around your TV set. Don't panic now. You're not aboard a transparent spaceship. It's a Zorb, invented in New Zealand. <laughs> to get the Zorb ready, think about making pancakes. First, you have to stretch the plastic out like you do the pancake dough. And to make it rise, instead of yeast, you use compressed...